Let's start with a hyperbolic statement. More games like this, earlier on, could have saved both the Wii U and the PlayStation Vita. Let me explain. 2006 kicked off what has been affectionately, or perhaps not so affectionately, come to be known as the Waggle Generation. The Wii followed two years after the Nintendo DS, and with it, Nintendo was largely seen to abandon the cutting-edge console ground that was occupied now solely by Sony and Microsoft, and they did this in favour of a blue sky approach to console manufacture. Games on these systems had touch or motion input options that widened the possibilities of playstyle, and it was a hit, a big hit. And this hit was one that Sony and Microsoft they did their best to ape in the following years with both the Kinect and Move controllers, but they both arrived just as the crest of this wave was passing. Nintendo managed to ride high that wave for a few years, but in doing so they made just a few too many moves that alienated their previous core player base. With the launch of the Wii U, they wanted to capitalise and create another generation using new, even more innovative controller inputs. The Wii U was innovative, let there be no doubt. But it was, it was also badly communicated and it lacked convincing killer games that adequately made use of the hardware. The console struggled at launch and it never recovered. And Nintendo definitely should have seen this coming. Sony launched the PlayStation Vita internationally to much applause in 2012, boasting that it had all of the gadgets and extra optional additions that the Waggle generation was famous for. Touchscreen controls, motion sensing, an inbuilt compass and microphone. The PS Vita was the most powerful handheld device ever seen. And it was beloved by a core fan base, but it never got much traction. The Wii U followed it just nine months later and history repeats itself. And I repeat, both consoles had good ideas, innovative designs, concepts that mobile phone gaming space would adapt and reproduce as it went on to blossom in the coming years. The problem was that, save for a few sacred special cases, it never appeared that the developers knew what to do with the hardware. Because if you simply take what works in a video game that was designed using old gaming design philosophies, and you simply replace button presses with unique controller inputs, such as waving your hand, it's a very bad idea. It has the potential to ruin an otherwise perfect game. Alternatively, assuming that your hardcore gaming audience is not suited for these new ways of play, and if you purely focus on the party game genre and a non-gamer audience, well, this is a move that it worked once and then showed increasingly smaller returns as the years went on. What was needed were games designed with the sensibilities for hardcore players, but they were sensible about how they would incorporate touchscreen or waggle controls. And these games, they do exist. And I would posit that Severed is the greatest title amongst them. So saying if games like Severed had come earlier, it would have saved these consoles, it's definitely an exaggeration. But it almost doesn't feel like one, you don't want it to be true. The Wii U struggled because the first party games weren't ready for its launch. And after that initial stumble, third party support simply dried up almost completely. The console's message, it reached the converted few, but it didn't reach the general masses. And Nintendo Land was simply not the brilliant sales pitch that Wii Sports had been a generation earlier. But if there had been one or two more touchscreen friendly games in those early days, ones that not just got, but embraced the touchscreen method, things might not have been so bleak. That a quality game like Severed was ported over from the similarly ailing PS Vita, that it arrived as the console was in its death knells, it isn't just a shame, it was an insult. Severed gets the reception it deserves, not just on the Wii U, but on every console it's appeared in. It's a unique experience. It reminds me of early three-dimensional exploration games with the character in a maze moving from room to room, block to block, like mist almost.
There is some puzzle solving aspects to this game that hark back to those days, but that theme isn't as developed as it could have been. Instead, the focus is clearly on exploration, using the map, and combat, swipe to win. Neither mechanic is completely original, but they are merged together fairly seamlessly in a package that is definitely more than the sum of its parts. Where the game excels is in its unique, somewhat spartan but completely absorbing presentation. As it plays out in first person, it's only one minute into the game when you get a first glance at yourself in the mirror and you learn that you have inhabited the part of a young, innocent girl with just a bloody stump left for her left arm. Your family is lost and you must retrieve them before their bodies are consumed. Sword in hand, you set out into the wilderness. So yes, the story is simple and straightforward, but it's compellingly told, with just a few characters. The music is ambient but haunting. The tunes will stay with you for hours after playing. The art is cartoony, but not childish, and it's made with just enough detail to convey its message. The map is large, but not overwhelming, giving the game just enough length to get your teeth into, but ending long before it gets tedious. Towards the end, it does start to get a little repetitive, as you fight enemies that rely on status effects and countdown time as designed to irritate rather than challenge you. But fortunately, this only strikes in the last stage of the game. Drinkbox Studios reproduced the engine that they used to produce a Metroidvania title such as Guacamole, and they produced with it something, something completely different, recognisable in style, but almost unique in gameplay. I can't praise this game enough for attempting to do something small and unique, and then doing it well. And I don't want to spoil what it contains too much, because it really isn't that long a game, and you deserve to experience it fresh.